Skeletons in a closet. So if you're gonna one of us may be gay. <laughs> Drop it in the comments which one of us is homosexual. Anyway, so many, many moons ago. April 2007 when we went to shoot it. At the time I was editing a lot of projects, mainly with this guy right next hey. to me. Um, and I read the book I Am Legend. Did I recommend that to you? I think you might have, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a brilliant book, check it out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So from that I wrote a script. Um, and I was working with Rongan and I only on a film, My Great Happiness. I yeah. was editing for her. Mm -hmm. And she mentioned that somebody she knew had a cottage in the middle of nowhere. Properly in the middle of nowhere. Proper <laughs> middle of nowhere. And I thought, what an ideal place to film this script I just wrote, which was Alone with the Dead. I had many different titles for it. Alone with the Screaming, Dead of the Night, but I settled with Alone with the Dead. From that, I decided to produce it. I made a film before then, which was made with friends and family and whatnot. But what was the name like, of the film before? Oh god, it's such a pathetic title. I call it Rose Thorn, which is now I cringe. Oh, I remember Rose Thorn. I cringe. <laughs> Every rose has its thorn. Oh, god, There's god. a bit of educating Jim to come. The future skeleton in your closet. No. No. <laughs> the reason why we're doing this is because it's it's fun to look back. It's fun to look back at your old stuff. And, and learn. And, and hopefully and... you've progressed. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully you've learned a lot. Um, but yeah, so where I was think I? think Jim learnt with Alone with the Dead not to let me DP. You did a good job! In fact, there's some really stuff in there now to this day. I think, yeah, that's really cool. Put with the axe and the log and yeah. all that kind of, you know... I mean, that's... yeah, we we Stuff done, in the bedroom. We worked on Axe Godzilla. Uh, and then, yeah, Jim was talking about this project. And I said, look, anything you want, I'm more than happy to help out. First AD was already taken. By a guy who's, who could drive the minivan. So, so, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, you're kind of limited with budget, so you're, you're, you're dragging people in and giving them sometimes two roles to do. Um, so we we went up to, I think it was, was it not far from Shropshire somewhere, I think it was, was it? So we took a minibus up, we picked up our actors from the train station before. Oh, yeah. yeah. Megan Arrell and uh, Kevin Jones. Kai! Kai. Cobra Kai, uh, do Cobra or Kai. die. So we had uh, Kevin and Megan, we had Jim on uh, as DP, we had Kristen Sinclair, who was the first AD stroke bus driver. Who stroke did have an, zombie. Stroke zombie. Stroke voiceover. Voiceover for, for the, the trailer. trailer. Which is yeah. fantastic. We'll drop that in the show notes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's when to watch. A man! We a cottage! Had, um, Katie Griffiths and Jessica D on makeup. Yeah. We had Rungan and Ioni, she was there obviously, um, location scout, stroke actress, stroke catering, if I remember rightly. Right, okay. Yeah, she done it, yeah. No, we picked it up and we had all the, all the food, catering, she sold a lot of the catering. Yeah, yeah I remember the food being pretty good. Yeah, yeah, actually. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, who else was there? Dave Hawkins. Dave. Uh, a zombie, stroke. Dave Hawkins was there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, it's still a photographer. Still so sorry, yeah. And he did some great stills, actually, yeah. to be fair. And his girlfriend, I think actually they're just friends then, Maxine, uh, now his wife. Said romance. Um, she was also there to help out and play a zombie too. She was a great zombie yeah, as well. Yeah, brilliant. Again, on sound, I think, wasn't it either off my camera or your camera? The on-board uh, mic, mic. Yeah. off the camera, got an extension thing, duct tape it to a broom pole, and, you know, so it was, it was like a boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, it was... And it was also yeah. still hooked up to the camera, so we didn't have to worry about syncing up sound. No. Yeah, of course, we had two cameras. We had, we had Jim oh, yeah. Sony um, PD-170 okay. and my Canon, Canon XL1S, both shooting a, a whopping 7x5.76, I think it is. This is proper standard definition. SD. Um, days of mini DV tapes, if you were oh, shooting yeah. films back then, you know. I mean, we left, we, we come home with a stack of tapes to a bloody upload to the computer, which... Oh, Actually, that's a good thing. Would you shoot two cameras again? No. <laughs> no. I mean, this is it. It was Sony and it was Canon, so two yeah. different makes. Um, again, we were editing this. Did we do part of this on your laptop as well? We, we did. I had an old HP Windows computer. It was all Windows back then. 
Um, before we can afford the Mac. Before we can afford a Mac. I've got to confess here, production, post-production went on for a bit. Uh, what, what's a bit, Jim? Uh, quite a while, about a year. Um, I fasted over things. I obsessed over things. One year? Was it about a year? Two, two oh, years? Mate, I didn't know. Okay. <laughs> it's quite a while. It was, let's just it was a few. let's just talk years. Um, okay. Trying to get trying to get it right. <laughs> and we did have some issues. I mean, back then our lighting, we did have very good light. Oh, yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah. What did we, what we use? Like, we used the the work lights. You know, so the garage yeah. lights. We had those. You had one proper light. We learned a lot. Didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we learned we made, a hell of a lot. We, I, I mean, speaking as the DP, I made a lot of mistakes. Which I then learned. Exactly. Um, this is it. You know, learned, learned what we could do and we couldn't do. Um, yeah. Um, and, and you'll see now, it's a very grindhouse um, kind of style grade over the top. I mean, I think. Um, Which was probably to salvage it, really, wasn't it? Partly to salvage it. It was popular at the time. But it was all, yeah, Robert Rodriguez doing yeah. uh, Planet Terror. I think they were heavily advertising it. We hadn't seen it at that point. No, but we just. Fell in love with that kind of retro yeah. ways, grindhouse kind of style grade, so we did that. Yeah. Hence the music is very um, synth orientated. Yeah. Again, I had help from Max and Dave with the music. Um, I didn't use all the music which they helped me create. I ended up doing my own score, which they still to this day bring up. I don't know why they got yeah. for that. Yeah, get over Move it. Move on, it. guys. I mean, Jesus Christ. It's like 10 years ago now. Yeah. I mean, you know, to be fair, when you finished it, it was probably last year. But still. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking last year. <laughs> there were two endings as well, wasn't there? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, the, the initial ending, I mean, well, it was a nice ending, okay? Um, which which one are we going to be watching today? This is the original ending. Right, okay. uh, the alternative, I, I'm not sure. We'll drop in the show notes. I'm yeah. sure it's on YouTube. I'm I think sure it is, yeah. I'm not sure it'll come up the alternative. Didn't somebody whisper in my ear, how about we do it like, I'm not sure if one of the actors said maybe, how about we mix it up, but we kind of... Yeah, go I definitely know like in terms of the shots, we were creating it on the fly, weren't we? Yeah, definitely. Which was a lot of fun, and that was some of the first stuff we shot as well, wasn't it? In, in that, that great like um, path, mm. even to the cottage. It's quite ballsy, I mean, again, kind of like with Jim with Actor Godzilla, you know, taking uh, quite a big you know, genre and, you know, special effects and all that and really pushing himself mm. as a filmmaker, similar to with Alone with the Dead, you know, making like a like a nearly a half hour film in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, it felt definitely like, in terms of what I was working on, the next step. I mean, speaking like as my own experience, it was great. It, it, it's kind of like what we also had with Night of Living Dead, you know, there were a bunch of us, too many of us to fit into this little holiday cottage. Yeah. It was four days, three days, four days, four days. yeah, three, three nights, half. three yeah. nights, four days, shooting in this little cottage in the middle of nowhere, fake blood. We literally, I think Great all, thing. I think I knew, I think I met Dave briefly before and Chris before, I said work with Jim. Hmm. But still, um, I mean, you know, half, all probably we would only known each other about half a year. Yeah, time. so I, I mean, I, li I think, I think I funded the film from a tax rebate which I had. Where where'd you get your funding from? Tax rebate. <laughs> Pay taxes, people. Um, great great make effects and um, no, I, I, obviously again I'm going back a couple of years. I'll be interesting to see, but definitely at the time I remember thinking very striking. Yeah. You know, Max I thought made a very striking zombie. Yeah. Um, Katie as well. Chris another zombie. Yeah yeah yeah. Well we we we. we we shot the film, so we shot the bulk of the film in those three and a half days, and then I just found that we needed to do extra day. There wasn't much zombie action, mm. um, and again, we were pushed for time. We were oh, adventurous. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> again, my fault. I kind of said to Jim, "Oh, mate, we'll blast through this. Why don't we do that other short?" Jim also had another short called "Run Rabbit Run." Do you remember that? Right. Yeah. Which was again much more of kind of like the wrong turn kind of kind genre, of, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of thing. Yeah. I was like, "Mate, while we're there, you know." Kai, he's a big beefy guy, you know, let's just go shoot that. We we barely had enough time. <laughs> yeah. Our future selves would have slapped our selves back then. Yeah. Get a grip. Come on, man. But uh, four, no, four days to shoot. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, it was a 20 minute thing. So that's five five yeah. pages a day is pretty good. Oh, yeah, we, we, we kicked ass. And then we had two days then of, of extra shoots. Um, mm. Yeah, and I had a little go of the effects in in terms of eyeball replacing, which I think turned out pretty good actually. I was I was definitely impressed at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, which was the introduction of Ratty. Ratty, yes, my now housemate Ratty, Stephen Rollins, who volunteered. Um, actually, yeah, should we talk about quickly about that because obviously Rongano was originally part of the shoot. 
Um, and then, yeah, obviously we looked, well, you looked over the footage. Yeah, I looked over the footage. It, it wasn't quite fitting in with what we had. So I thought I need to kind of up the ante with this. You know, the big reveal of a dead body is just like the first initial scare and gory moment. So is, I it, like, is it the first dead body we see in the thing? I think it is. Yes, I think it is. Yeah. Yes. Again, it's been a while since I watched this. So, uh, yeah. But I wanted to have a good scare, a good jump. And at the minute, at that time, I was watching a lot of video co-pilot oh, yeah. uh, yeah. After Effects tutorials. And he'd done a really good eye replacement. I thought, oh, I wonder if I could do that. But in order to do I had to reshoot mm. the scene as well. So, right, he stepped in. Um, and we shot it. So, I mean, again, that... So when you watch that bedroom scene, where, where Kai's walking into the bedroom, you know, I was shot in a cottage and then a close up was shot in my my flat bedroom at the time. About a year later. About a year later. <laughs> so I think it cut seamlessly. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, that's it. Let's watch this back. Let's boy. watch it. James Morrissey's Alone with the Dead. Be prepared, people. Oh, look at that. So this is again look keeping at the, in the grindhouse with film. the theme. The Melfa Films logo. Very nice, mate. Is it him running down the path, or was there something before that? Oh. There's a lot of black. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So so basically setting the tone, you know, a lot of variety and a lot of end of the world kind of stuff. So I, I think I think some. So you've already always, always been obsessed with YouTube and, and conspiracy theories. Yeah. yeah. That, that looks like this is me. This is what I do in my spare time. <laughs> uh, so I just basically pinched a lot of YouTube um, footage. Uh, that's actually shot in the centre of town. Yeah, that's Cate's Park, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's Ooh, that's uh, some of Jim's sperm. Yeah. <laughs> Hefty did, lens did on you, that one. Did you uh, go see the doctor after yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they said I'm fucked. Um, and here, and we, here go. we go. Yeah, I think this was actually some of the first stuff we shot, wasn't it? Yeah, this was. We, we, we were quite blessed with, yeah. with weather too. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Again, I think it was like April, wasn't it? So yeah. usually we're pretty lucky in April. Really, that was a nice shot. I remember when we oh, seen yeah. this, we were like, whoa, Jim, he's still away, he looks awesome. Yeah, nice. So I had yeah, to slap the title. Oh, mate, yeah. although what about the, the spacing on that, you know? What's with, yeah, with the down there, mate? It's in a rush. Yeah. yeah later. Well, some good uh, tripod action there. Yeah. <laughs> Before warp stabilizers. I, what I'm going to say is if there's any dodgy shots, even though it's two cameras, and to be honest, most of the time we can't remember which shots are which, I'll take the blame. For them. <laughs> um, although Chris, although no, I will take credit for that one. I remember yeah, that. Were, that, that was that was tidy. Tidy. So again, this is the cottage. Nice little cottage. Yeah. We did have some ramblers walk by at, at certain points. Remember the uh, kind of and the back? sheep. Remember the yeah, sheep. We yeah. got invaded by sheep. So oh, I remember flashbacks to that cottage. So again, all of the cast and crew were were staying in this cottage. Thankfully, only for like you know four days. There was a bit of cabin fever. I remember having a big argument with some of the cast and crew because we were trying to film in the bathroom I and some people wanted to have, have a bath. bath. Yeah. And I was just like, can you just wait? I completely, <laughs> I completely lost my call. You went all AD, didn't you? So, I, I was just like, look, we're not here for a holiday. Yeah. Like, I'm moving, man. <laughs> So I, um, I think for this shot, we're outside the kitchen, filming yeah, through the window. Through the window. Um, Again, such a small place. That yeah, we, we it, a lot of it was hiding the camera, wasn't it? We literally had to get outside the cottage to film inside the cottage at some point. Yeah. But um, amazing location, though. I mean, yeah. Kev really f fake drinking there. Wow, that's a, that's yeah. good stuff. Some fake gulps. I'm getting like a Ben Affleck vibe, but like Ben Affleck now, yeah. it's almost as if you know he's trained for Kyle's from the, the future, and he yeah. knew. So it smells, smells, smells rotting. Smell the, smell the fire acting. <laughs> Knife! Yeah, I think I think I scored this on an old keyboard yeah. with like a USB linked up to my PC at the time. Very Halloween-esque yeah. shot there at the stairway. I wanted to, to keep the knife in view, so the guy nice. to hold it back yeah. behind himself. Yeah. As he ascends the staircase, builds up tension. This is all, is this James Morrissey's score? It is. There you go. Most of it is. <laughs> Sorry, Max Dave. <laughs> he opens it. And there's a turd left in the toilet. That's what the smell is! We always joke that Christian would be on the loo with the newspaper. <laughs> All right! All right. Hi, I'm James Morrissey. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Here we go. So we get building. I mean, I, I, perhaps I spent too long building tension. Maybe people switch off and go, All right, dodgy pipes. 
So for this, you'll see now we. Oh, so this the next is, shot. Yeah, this is cut across. So this, so this is this is actually in, in the basically any shot without Kev is in my flat. But we propped up the legs just to get the frame in yeah, right. Yeah, God, that's a trick we've had to use a number yeah. of times, isn't it? So that is Rungano under there. I mean, for me, this was this and Final Girl was like the the best practice we had for making our first feature, which was Night in Living Dead Resurrection. Yeah. Um, and so many of the tricks that we learned on on this and Final Girl were kind of like, well, fuck it, we'll, yeah, definitely. we'll recycle it and, and try it again. Rick, so, you learn Rungano, you Rungano, off. Rungano, Rungano. Ratty! Digital zoom. Nice! Uh, That's nice, yeah, man. Right, isn't it? So, so again. Horrendous synth play in there. So Kai, I, Kai and Ratty have never met, no. despite the fact that Kai is now going to kill him. So we're stabbing a bag of blood there. Um, and underneath is a, is a metal tray just to kind of get the impact and the explosion. And we just flick right with loads of blood over his face. And lots of blood for uh, Kai as well. I think the day we moved out of that flat, there was still blood in the bottom corner, I noticed. Just didn't quite get to it all. This is a, a, a body my, my mother made up, actually. Yeah. All close, so. did, we, did we name her Barbara? I think we did. They're coming to get you, Barbara. <coughs> did we leave it up there? <coughs> I think we left it a big pile of sheep shit, didn't we? Yes. Which was uh, oh, yeah. right outside the front. Which we were there. very keen to In fact, that big on. pile of manure did come in handy for some shots. In fact, there's a wide you'll see at the end, which we... Um, yeah. Again, this terrible idea was like, yeah, I could be like the point of view of the body. Yeah, it was the right, kind of like Evil Dead kind of style. Shooting. I mean, that was a massive influence. Yeah. Was, I mean, and still is, is, yeah, the first Evil Dead. Well, you see an eyebrow raised now. This is very Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Down, down, down. Mm. I like axis. I like the axis, nice. I got a semi. <laughs> and again, nice low shot. Yeah. <laughs> it's some beautiful stuff. It's, I mean, look at it. It's, it's a great location. Um, yeah. So again, you know, this now is going to transition into night. So more um, royalty free stock footage. Oh, right. Coming up. Oh, cool. Um, oh, yeah. I remember. Yeah, that was a bad idea. <laughs> I was like, we could use the sofa as a rig, and when he pulls it, the camera yeah. moves with it. In theory, a good idea, but in practice, that's why Jim cut away. <laughs> Here we go. So, the sun's setting. And even now. Oh, his little face. Oh, Shh. I think he was actually that We're getting though. his performance. I mean, yeah. yeah There's a long, long of a shoot. Quite intense hours, I mean. We got a bit. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we didn't actually sleep in the night, did we? No. It's been all night no. laughing at Christian's but again, terrible jokes. We were like mid 20s, so like we got forward to do it. Yeah. 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 There we go. Some uh, Nice. Quite nice, yeah. That's amazing, Jim. Thanks. Yeah. I shot that myself. No, actually, I, I'm DP. I'm taking oh, yeah, yeah, shot that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, James, you're incredibly talented. <gasps> Here we go. So we got the blue gels out, and uh, yeah, nice. This was actually shot at night as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Did we shoot any day for night on this? I can't remember. No, I don't think we did. I think that was beyond our capabilities, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. There we go, so they're all approaching. Mad scramble now. <laughs> we, a bit of fake we, uh, lighting Yeah, there. there was some fake we went lens to flares. Yeah, yeah, slightly in. Like, this shot works out quite nice. Yeah. Very evil dead. I mean, it's great. Katie Griffiths, the makeup assistant, as is on the Yeah. Room. And Ooh. this is a fake lightning. Fake lightning as well. That was all added in. That the, was the, never. The, the idea was at the time it was slightly underexposed, so just so you can see, I added some fake lightning flashes. Yeah. And with, well, I mean, with the grindhouse effect, it all kind it of works. Definitely. I love this stuff. This was on the reshoot day yeah, stuff, wasn't it? Reshoot day. You'll see Max. Was, that's Max. Wasn't this at uh, Max's parents' Max's house? Max's parents' house, yeah. Yeah. That was a great day. That cost yeah. me a lot in pizza that day. That day. Yeah, it was amazing pizza. Must be nice pineapple on pizza. What's wrong with people? And yet some people don't like mushrooms. Oh. Here we go. So timed in that pitch bend with the hand coming down, and then almost like you know. We actually screened this at Abattoir back in 2008. It sounded really good. It looked decent, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> they you had, the you had uh, in the audience Claudio Simonetti. Fair play. Yeah. Uh, the main composer from Goblin, uh, he was playing at Abattoir that year, and he, hats off to him, because most people just, you know, piss off. He watched it, He sat yeah. through, watched all the short films, including this one. Yeah. Jim, you went up to him afterwards, and what, what did you say? I said, do you like my stuff? He went, yeah, man. <laughs> 
No, so you know, it's great. Um, and oh, what was the feedback? Yeah, uh, Michael Coven, uh, author of some great books on uh, folklore and giallo films and black exploitation. He came up to us afterwards as well and said he really liked it. Mm. I've got a feeling. No, Abattoir. It was the alternative ending as part of it because what, what he liked about it is he came up to us and he said what I really liked is and spoilers for the alternative ending um, is yeah what if the last guy alive is a psycho yeah, yeah, at the yeah, end of the yeah. world and yeah. it, he really enjoyed that about yeah. it um, it actually got some really good like online feedback a lot of people when yeah, um, I, I, I think again it, we did win uh, at, at um, a film festival uh, best film and a international film under 35 minutes we did win that so yeah yeah this, can I just point? This is David Davis. He's got the, the best. Oh yeah, very Welsh voice, like Richard yeah. Burton, like. But he does a cracking. I I loved all of this. The atmosphere is fantastic. And again, we kind of ripped this off in Night of the Living Dead. The whole radio yeah. atmosphere. For me, this this was like very John Carpenter esque. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's a guy alone in the middle of the woods, yeah. hearing about the end of the world, and it's you know, him sat in the dark. We tried to do it in Night of the Living Dead. I'd say probably not as successfully as this. I I, I much prefer this in terms of oh, yeah, this zoom, so digital, digital zoom. zoom yeah. yeah, much more claustrophobic. Mm. I mean, I must want to talk over this guy. Nice sound design on this as well. Yeah. This is your idea on a gym. Oh, the slow pan yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. Faded up then to black. Again, I think I just stole the idea from Boogie Nights, where I just love in Boogie Nights there's a scene where the character walks in and rather than following the character, you just slowly pan away. Mm. And yeah. Okay. Now this, I was, I loved, <laughs> I loved the look of this daytime. It looks very authentic, kind of grindhouse. Yeah. Um, Is the shot coming up, which I refused with, to shoot? Yeah, I did though. I, this I, one. Yeah. yeah, I literally laid in front. You of did it then. Yeah. <laughs> he threw an axe. At you. And there's an there's an outtake where you see the as he chops the wood, the log fly past. You literally, I think I, I was on the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I refused to. <laughs> yeah. I was too scared. Mate. But he has been down the side of toilets for his films, but he will not stand in front of an axe for me. Come on. I, I stand by my decision. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was a, a fake pan down there, wasn't it? A digital one. Because yeah. again, we cropped it. Yeah. And so when you crop it, you've got like about 10% either side that you can play with. So you This was actually a, shot at Christian's house. Oh yeah? And that's me. Oh. That's me. So, um... Multi-talented. Yeah, we, that's, uh... My bob in with this. There we go. Enter Meg. Megan. Megan, yeah. Nosy neighbour. Here we go. Damsel in distress. An amazing screaming. Which we had. Jim made us do multiple takes. So yeah. we had a lot had a lot of that screaming. Oh, that's right. I love the colours on that, though, man. You know? It's good, man. Such a talented DP. Who was your DP? A guy called James Plum. Gonna keep an eye out for him. And this again, this is some Sky uh, royalty free Sky footage. <laughs> because uh, we haven't got Sky near us. No. Well, my camera wouldn't handle it. Uh, the Sky. Couldn't handle the Sky. It's too big. But again, you know, we, we really tried to salvage some of these shots. Yeah. With, um, you know, that moonlight kind of look. Because this was. Yeah. I think we lit this, it was warmer, wasn't it? There were more oranges yeah. and stuff. And then from a storytelling point of view, it made more sense for them to be in the dark, didn't it? Because yeah, they were hiding yeah, from the, the zombies. So right? I mean, so now we would probably maybe have a light source going from the kitchen to like Kev, and maybe we would pretend there's another window near Meg yeah. and, and put some lights and keep the background nice and dark and then yeah. lit, you know. But again, this is this is why we're doing this is because yeah, we've learned a lot. Yeah, I mean, we we backlit a lot, and yeah. again because. Yeah, I mean, I think if 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 Kev is more lit from the front, maybe we could have fake fire or something. I don't mm. know. You've got to think about practical lights. I mean, in that set, what could act as well, a light, light source? Yeah. So whether it be moonlight, um, a small lamp, whatever. So this is us really trying to like you know figure it out in post, which yeah. is not ideal, and we don't ever advise. You try to try and film it Because, I mean, like I said, I mean, it, the grindhouse helps, but you can definitely tell yeah. it's been uh, underexposed and we're trying to salvage it. But, uh, actually, yeah, we live and learn. Live yeah. And learn. I mean, from an aesthetic point of view, I like it, but I think we're doing a disservice to the actors because we're not really getting mm. as much of their reactions as no. they're delivering, you know, what are quite important lines. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, two cameras, yeah. I'm not sure who was filming who. I think you were filming Kev. Yeah, that rings a bell. Chris was filming Meg, if I remember rightly. Oh, so you went behind the camera. Uh, no, I tried to allow Chris to use the camera as much as possible. And in all fairness to Chris, he, he, he wasn't experienced with the camera, well, still isn't experienced with the camera. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he, he was quite adamant on being behind the camera. And he insisted on making it. I can't complain. I mean, look, that needs to be locked off. <laughs> well, again, this is before the understanding the real necessity of a tripod. Yeah. Um, too far from I think they were sipping on, was it cold tea? Sounds about right. I can't remember what yeah. it did. Something not very nice. So again, I mean, a lot of this is two cameras, so that we were rolling at the same time. Yeah. Which, Which you would seems like a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's a blue fucking moon. <laughs> is, that, is that James Morrison that's, or is that uh, stock footage? God knows. Yeah. It looks like stock. I just really blued it up. Here we go, some more zombie action. No, oh, this is quite a nice shot. Yeah. There's Chris. Chris is a zombie. So this is kind of playing on the idea of something coming toward oh, the black and then boom. Um, I mean, kind of had of a quick snap there, but... I like it. I think it works as a jump. I really like the makeup on Katie, which Jess did for that. Yeah. She really captured that evil dead. I remember meeting J uh, Jess in Newport. We had a discussion about it. And I think I referenced evil dead a few times that she clearly and thankfully had in her head for the makeup evil dead style. It's always good when your makeup artist has actually seen evil dead. Yeah, exactly. But um, again, some fake lightning. That's kind of Night of the Living Dead inspired shooting there. Um, through the, the yeah the frosted glass kind of yeah. thing yeah yeah I mean it, yeah clearly we were pretty shameless about our Evil Dead ripping off but hey if you're gonna rip it off I rip off something that's great and that's fun particularly yeah. like I yeah, love that shot I, I love yeah. that shot I think you used that in some of like the images as well didn't you you actually yeah. got a screen grab from it yeah. you used that in some of the primos so. there we'll um we'll drop on the the painted image that you got done. Yeah, definitely. Oh, oh, look at that. So that's uh, some intentional frame. Framing. Yeah, yeah. So again, you know, some committing to the grindhouse aesthetic. Looks like it's deteriorating uh, the, the, the film. And again, I mean, that we kind of picked up from uh, Rodriguez on the commentary, wasn't it? I think yeah. by the time we were editing it, um, he was talking about actually using those effects to create a mood. Yeah, uh, and one of the, the greatest tricks that he talked through in the, the commentary on that, which we still use today, is dropping frames to create an effect, um, which was like an unintended consequence in the original Grindhouse stuff. But what we used was, you know, if you want, and it, and it works if it's something otherworldly, if you, you know, if you want to kind of create almost like a jump thing, you drop frames. Um, and you did that with the one with Katie coming into yeah, frame as yeah. well. Um, I think I sped it up a bit as well, but I yeah. probably wouldn't have uh, sped it but up nowadays. No, that, that's, dropping frames is enough. Dropping frames works a lot better than speeding up uh, footage if you want to kind of get something quicker, create a, a bizarre effect. Yeah. Guys done a great job. Yeah, Kev really enjoyed the role. I think. I think that's yeah, it was it was great fun to be Kev, fair. Kev yeah. understood all the references as well, like he said to Bruce Campbell. He was. Oh uh, yeah. Again, and, uh, he, loved he did that. a cracking Arnie impression as well, didn't he? Yeah. You? Yeah. Get to the chopper! Get to the chopper! Imagine that, but good. Yeah, but better at uh, Better at uh, Yeah, it was, it was a fun shoot. So, uh, so how did you get Kev? Because Kev and Meg were from London, is that right? But London-based. Um, how did you get them involved? I think it was through shooting people, I think. Shooting people? Um, I is that still going, shooting people? I, I think so, yeah. Wow. So, um... Who yeah. here remembers shooting people? Shout out if you remember shooting people. No longer a member, cost the fucking fortune. Uh, but live and learn. Yeah, so, and, and again. I don't know if I shot that, but I like that shot. Yeah, I think Chris shot that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Two days later, the go. goats! The goats! So there we go. Hi, honey, I'm naked. Mm. Muscle! So, Jim found Kai on a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. uh, a website yeah. for coffee lovers called Grinder. 
Oh God, yeah. Yeah. No, sorry, mate. You were saying anyway. How did you, you dropped an ad for them? So I, I, I dropped an ad. I looked for a male and a female, and both both very positive, very enthusiastic, and they looked like they could do the part. And I don't know if experience between the two of them. So yeah, I basically said, okay, you got the got the roles. We picked them up at Cardiff Central train station. Met for the first time, and within minutes of meeting them, chucked them in the back of a van. And uh, there we were. That's how we roll in time. Travelling up to uh, Shropshire. I remember I was shooting that. I was particularly yeah. in love with that shot. Nice and nice stuff. I think we um, had an extreme close-up of eyes coming up. This was yeah. really nice. I mean, this again, this is, you know, using and looking up, we had some good solid daylight for this scene. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, looking back, I mean, if we were doing it now, we probably would have put a, a, a big light source coming through the window just in case it was overcast. You don't want that interruption of clouds coming over. And, yeah, no, nature was definitely on our side. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> otherwise... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so we shot, yeah, kind of like medium-wide yeah, close-ups. Close -ups, yeah. And then we punched in, we got a little reaction of Meg's eyes. And do you remember me insisting on that shot? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's called yeah. a dick move on my part. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, was, it was to work more for the alternate cut. Yeah. Um, because the idea was, the, the, the thing I was just concerned about um, was that in the alternate cut, it turns out he's a fucking psycho. You have to beat that. He was a psycho. Um, and we wanted Meg's reaction. So the next shot after he delivers the line of, we just have to survive or something yeah, like yeah. that, uh, was Meg trying to run out the house and then grab it. And I was worried in the edit that that might come off too cheesy. Mm. So my solution to the idea, and I'm not saying it's a good solution, but the thing I came up with was literally just having a close up of her eyes dawning in realization. Mm. Um, again, we'll drop it in the, the show notes, the alternate thing. And, yeah. and you let me know whether I was out of my ass. To be fair, I think this was the last day, wasn't it? And we were just wanting to go home. But I, I kind of said, Jim, just give me this one shot. I think it works really well. This is the... Uh, so this is all... This wasn't in the alternate now, was it? This is this is the, the original. This is the original. Yeah, the nice, you nice things. And we've got some great footage of Chris standing in. <laughs> Big bag. We swear you wanted to play the part. Is that in the blooper reel? Yeah, it is. Okay, yeah. we, we'll put the blooper reel in as well. well. Let's put in everything we've got for oh, Flow Over Dead. There's like Grindhouse oh, teasers. Other we really, trailers. yeah, we really. I, I made a DVD oh, and it's all on there. Yeah. It's a good looking package, painted cover as well. Yeah, um, thanks to a good friend of mine, Paul Morgan, who's a fabulous oh, artist. Oh, is it that Paul? Paul Morgan, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Paul Morgan painted that. Cool. Us. Hey, Paul, good job. Yeah, I remember yeah. getting that scan in, in um, because it was like quite large or whatever. Yeah, we didn't have a scanner big enough, so I took it to my, my day job at the time and had a word with the print room lads. And they scanned it and they were really impressed with it. I yeah. think that was the first time they knew I was into kind of filmmaking and stuff. And they're like, oh, this looks good, what's this? Yeah, so um, no, good stuff. Yeah, it's proper throwback to like, you know, like the 70s, 80s, like action movie, horror movie kind of pose, wasn't it? I'm just obsessed with it now, like, you know, maybe we should uh, change, but fuck it. Stunted in our emotional yeah. and mental growth. Yeah. Here we go. Voice over there from Kev. The man in his axe and his... Uh, Get off me! <laughs> Don't you touch me! We're not that friendly. I think this is a Maxine Dave bit of tunage, yeah? Didn't you want uh, Gimme Shelter or something from the Stones? We did, yeah, but... Uh, we couldn't afford it to no. that. No. Copyright! Yeah. Go, go, go. Go. Some really sped up uh, titles there. Yeah, we've got we've watched 23 minutes of it. Yeah. There you go. Very uh, much kind wow. of there. Like, yeah, so that yeah. that is literally the first time I've seen that yeah. for a good few years. What do you think, Jim? Uh, yeah, do you know what? It, it, yeah, some of it is a bit like, oh God, I do that differently. But overall, you know, it's one of your first films. Yeah, yeah, quite. You're, sure. you're kind of proud of, of what you can you tell. You time. can tell when somebody is um, has an eye or wants to tell a story visually. Um, yeah, I, I think even back then we were kind of we were onto something. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it was was learning, with us kind of like ripping off some of our favorite films and seeing how it worked, mm. 
seeing what worked and what didn't. Yeah, we're exploring styles yeah. rather than trying to do our own thing, even though we probably kidded ourselves to make up we were. But you know, like you too, when you're first starting out, you you study people who, who you admire and yeah. want to make films like, and then you try out their kind of stuff, and then in the process you develop your own. So, I mean, yeah. this was very much Ramey and Carpenter. This yeah, was yeah. the baby of Ramey yeah, and Carpenter, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I don't think there are probably any other influences here. <laughs> but heavily inspired by the book, I imagine, uh, Richard Matheson, I think. You yeah. know. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something. Um, I know I did, which yeah. is, you know, that's why Jim never asked me to deep it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's good just stuff. too damn dark. Good, good stuff, good <laughs> stuff. Yeah, so uh, maybe in the future we'll do some more. Or, yeah, definitely. You know, so I want to see Rose Thorne. Uh, final Girl, we could do Final yes. Girl, that's a nice short one. Yes. Actually, to be honest, by the time we open our mouth, it's over and done with it, and I think it's only like two minutes. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us again, guys. Until next um, time. And what, what, what do we do? We, we like, subscribe. Like us. If, if you fondle. like what you see, <laughs> fondle. Uh, yeah, uh, do like, do subscribe. Um, please share. Yeah. Share the love. Until next time. And um, yeah, if you want us never to do this again, let us know as well, because otherwise we're just going to keep doing it.